Hey, it's Mike here, like a microphone, and today I want to talk about that recent Lancet study that has the media once again assuring everybody that their high animal fat diet is wonderful, and it's certainly reigning in all of those shares on social media and clicks and ad revenue, so they're doing good, they're good business people. But I want to present a less popular perspective here that this study, which they call the Pure Study, was actually the Poor Study. Bear with me, in the sense that it used dietary markers of rich and poor of socioeconomic status, which it failed to properly adjust for to draw inaccurate conclusions about health outcomes. But because of the usual self-gratifying twist of the media, people are walking away from these articles thinking, all carbs are horrible for you, that vegetables don't really matter as much as we thought, and that you should eat more animal fat. This is all also being used to push low carb diets while people conveniently ignore the fact that fruit and beans, which were both protective, are carbs. All right, let's actually take a closer look at the study and who it looked at. It took food questionnaires from 135,000 people in 18 countries. They included three high-income countries, 11, quote, middle-income countries, and four low-income countries. I wanna emphasize that this is a very wide range of countries. Each country has its own unique set of inequality issues. And of those middle-income countries, the only one that isn't considered developing by the International Monetary Fund's 2015 report is Chile, so this is mostly the developing world with some richer countries thrown in there. Now to the specific findings that people are going so nuts over. Firstly, higher intake of fat was associated with lower mortality, and this included saturated fat specifically. What? And secondly, that higher total carb intake was associated with higher mortality. So why do I think this has more to do with socioeconomic status than macronutrients and particular fats? Well, in most of the world, higher socioeconomic status means higher consumption of meat and dairy, which means more animal fat, more saturated fat. From the WHO, there is a positive relationship between the level of income and the consumption of animal protein, with the consumption of meat, milk, and eggs increased at the expense of staple foods. When we were talking about staple foods, of course, we are talking about those grains, that total carbohydrate intake, like rice. Now you might be thinking, if saturated fat is good, is being poor really that bad in terms of mortality rates to make saturated fat look good? You're just a biased vegan, or am I? In Brazil, one of the countries studied, looking at those in their 30s, a 1.75 or 1.9 times death rate, depending on your sex. Now, the pure study was broken down into quintiles or fifths, comparing one fifth with the highest, one fifth with the lowest. And from India, another country studied, they found that the quintile with the least amount of assets had three times higher mortality than the quintile with the most assets. Is it that low fat diets could kill you or that being poor does kill you? The mortality measured in those studies is far more powerful than the effects from the pure study. For example, when comparing the highest versus lowest groups of saturated fat consumption, we measure a 14% decrease in mortality. That is a lot less than the 200% increase we saw when looking at assets in India. Here's an illustration of the situation. Perhaps saturated fat was raising risk by even 50%, but because rich people can afford saturated fat and have that way lower mortality rate, that over-adjusted it down to a lower mortality overall, even after inadequately adjusting for socioeconomic status. No, I am not the only person with this view, as David Katz, the director of Yale University's Prevention Research Center, wrote, a more accurate headline might have been, quote, very poor people with barely anything to eat get sick and die more often than affluent people with access to both ample diets and hospitals. I also spoke to Dr. Tushar Mehta, who I recently met in Toronto, who expressed that their adjustments for socioeconomic status were not sufficient due to the cross-cultural aspect. He said, quote, When it comes to assessing diet, we can statistically adjust mortality rates for income and education between urban Canadians, whose lifestyles are somewhat similar, but not between the rich and poor in Asia or an African country, or worse, statistical adjustments when lumping Canadians with the rich and poor of places like India. It may be that harnessing this socioeconomic saturated fat effect is the only way to get saturated fat to look good. You know, take people with one and a half to three times the death rate because they're poor and then pin them directly against wealthy people who eat more saturated fat. It's honestly, it's genius. And it really makes me wonder what other stories this data set would tell. 
As for carbs, well, that brings me to the flaws in the study, mainly being that all carbs were lumped together, refined carbs and whole carbs. We know that refined carbs are not healthy. We know that whole carbs are good. It would be like lumping ice and fire together, not in the Game of Thrones type of way, then taking a temperature measurement and using that as a basis for estimating the temperature of ice cream or something. It just makes no sense. That might be my worst analogy ever. But this all carbs increase mortality thing is obviously misleading when you consider that the carbs in fruit and legumes were associated with lower mortality. That in itself is separating whole carbs and refined carbs. And again, carbs are associated with lower income. So it's hard to say whether the carbs were actually killing people or that it was poor people dying more. The study also concluded that the benefits of vegetable and fruit intake actually dwindled as you got to that highest level of consumption. Katz believes that the upper end of that chart was cut off due to over adjusting for things that veggie lovers also do, like exercise more and not smoke. This makes sense because there are countless studies showing that the more vegetables you eat, the healthier the outcome is. Next, they did a food questionnaire and then study people for 10 years. It's just not the most accurate method. I mean, do you remember what you ate for dinner last night? How many grams of saturated fat were in there? Come on. So what are the authors concluding beyond the study? They are saying that we should not be afraid of saturated fat and that we should eat about 50% carbs. Well, here's a study from 1949, the best data that we have on what the Okinawans traditionally ate. They ate 85% carbohydrates. They also only ate 3.7 grams of saturated fat per day. That's only 1.8% of their total calories from saturated fat. Man, these guys must have been dropping like flies. Nope, they were the longest living population on planet Earth until they, well, increased their animal fat consumption and modernized their diet. And it's also worth noting that vegans who generally eat higher carb diets and the lowest saturated fat out of any dietary group have lower rates of mortality. And also, can I mention this study in every video? We have interventionary trials showing that a whole food vegan diet rapidly unclogs arteries and functionally halts heart attack and stroke in people with advanced cardiovascular disease. This is real people with real diet change, not loose associations based off questionnaires. Finally, I cannot finish this video without mentioning the study's funding. They're unrestricted grants from several pharmaceutical companies. Many people don't see this as a problem, but take a look at the first major contributor there, AstraZeneca. AstraZeneca makes statins, medications that lower cholesterol. Guess who you can't sell many statins to? People eating low saturated fat diets. Vegans, for example, have ideal levels of LDL cholesterol on average, and we see that stepwise decrease in cholesterol going from omnivore to vegetarian to vegan, from high saturated fat to low saturated fat. And I'm sure the pharmaceutical companies know this are controlled feeding trials, which are incredibly effective, where they actually control the amount of saturated fat going into somebody's mouth. They show that the more saturated fat consumed, the higher your level of cholesterol becomes. But if everybody believed the opposite, that saturated fat decreased mortality, well, then you'd have a lot, a lot of customers. Is that the most conspiracy I've ever gotten? I think that's the most conspiracy I've ever gotten. But I think we need to zoom out and use our logic here. What is this study saying? It is telling you to keep eating the standard American diet. If anything, it's telling you to eat the standard American diet with less carbs. And what happens when people try that? Going low carb? Well, from this meta-analysis, increased all-cause mortality by 31%. If you want to make life choices based off association and studies, you can't ignore that one. To summarize, it is more likely that the peer study's conclusions were actually just measuring dietary markers of poorness, which they failed to fully adjust for, than the actual effect of these macronutrients and certain fats. So just like how they over-adjusted and came to the completely incorrect conclusion that eating the highest amount of vegetables isn't actually healthier for you, they under-adjusted that effect of being poor on mortality, which is extremely powerful, and that's how they just got nonsense conclusions. And this is exactly what we need for the animals in the environment right now. More people running away from carbs, which have a low death count and a low environmental impact and going straight for that saturated animal fat, which causes a lot of deaths, a lot of suffering and does a lot of damage to our climate. So don't believe the hype. Eat a diet that we know prevents and reverses heart disease, whole plants.
But sadly, way more people are gonna see those original headlines telling him to eat saturated fat than rebuttals like this one. Still feel free to share it though. All right, if you saw my aging video, you know that I asked you guys if you had a new YouTube channel to share it down below and that I might mention some of you. So I wanna highlight a couple cool channels. Some are literally brand new. All right, here we go. There's Queen V, her intro is literally higher quality than mine. She has very high energy videos like this one about cheese. And then the adventures of Jazz and Lucy where they've thrown together some pretty sweet recipes. We have Pamela D, a vegan lady who had the courage to speak about endometriosis, which is pretty cool and a little bit bigger, but I know animation takes a ton of work, so check out Veganimation. I also love the internationalness going on here. There's this Russian vegan channel, I guess her name's pronounced Alexandra Anderson, not sure. A German couple with a bunch of vegan videos, and finally, Lua Cecil with her Spanish channel. And there were so many more great vegan channels and I hope to spotlight more in the future. But for now, thank you for watching. Feel free to like and subscribe. See you next time.